Hello, everybody. This is Patrick and Bryson back again with another Stone webisode. Today, we will be talking about alarms on the server side of motion detection in Milestone. Um, and Bryson is going to go deeply into that. Um, so I'll turn the time over to Bryson. Awesome. Thanks so much, Patrick. Yeah, so we're just going to jump right in here. So where we're going to want to start setting this up in is the uh, Expertech management client right here. So I'm logged in right here on my system and I have uh, selected the camera that I'm going to be using for this uh, this demonstration right here. So I'm under devices right here and then I'm on cameras and then I've selected my camera right here. I'm going to use this SLC support office camera here that's in our office. Oops, my bad, sorry. Uh, and so a couple of things that you'll want to have noted beforehand before you get started on these uh, type of events is there's a difference between server side and what they call camera side motion detection. So by default, Milestone set up for server side motion detection. And what that means is your camera is going to uh, send its information to the server and the server is going to run uh, basically it's going to look at the the pixelation changes and the keyframes on the system in order to detect when motion changes occur and that's set up right here on the camera if we look here under the settings we have this motion section right here so you see here we have motion detection turned on and we have our uh motion preview right here and then we have our sensitivity and our threshold defined right here we also have privacy mask we can configure right here you can see those are shown here as well that's what you're seeing right here um and that basically what you're setting here is the amount of pixel changes that need to occur in order to trigger motion detection and therefore recording in some systems. So you can see right here, perfect timing. Uh, we had an individual walkout right there. The motion occurred and happened. You saw it happen right there across that threshold right there, which then triggers our event in our, in our system, which for this purpose, we're going to have that fire and alarm in milestone. So you'll need to make sure you have this configured first inside of your system right here. Um, and there's many different ways to do this. Uh, getting these set up, you know, correctly and right and the, the best for your environment is highly important and and something that definitely, you know, us here at Stone Security can help you out with um, getting these motion settings configured correctly. Um, so once we have those set up right here, then what we'll want to do is go down to our alarms and we're going to define a new alarm definition. So I'm going to come in right here and I'm going to right click and I'm going to do add new. So it's going to be our new alarm definition and we'll go ahead and do motion alert server side and then I'm going to do SLC support office. We're just going to do this on one camera, my bad. Uh, one camera right now, but you can actually set this up for multiple cameras as well. And we can go ahead and we can set like instructions in here if we wanted while we're defining this alarm. I'm not going to go into too much detail on all of the different parameters uh, here inside of the alarm definitions. But for this purpose right here, we're going to go ahead and we're going to define a triggering an event. And since this is a server side motion, we're going to do a system event. We'll drop this down here and this will allow us to define the system event which we want to trigger the alarm on and we're going to do motion detected pretty straightforward so then we have our, to define our sources so you see our sources option right here we'll go ahead and hit select and then this will bring up our server where we'll build, go and we'll find that camera that we want to add in here and again we can do uh, groups of cameras if we wanted we can add more than one so i could come in here and once i expand this out right here i can add more than one camera if i wanted to Give it a second, it likes to take a, a second here to load those. We'll go down here and we'll find our SLC support office camera and we'll go ahead and add it. And if you wanted to add another one, you just select that and you would add it right here as well. And then you could define that in there. So super easy to add multiple cameras into this. So if you had lots of cameras you wanted to build off of to set up your motion alerts for, you could do that with, through one alarm. Um, so we'll go ahead and we'll set that source right there for this. We can set a time period when we want this to trigger, and this can be important uh, for you, especially for your motion alerts. Sometimes you may not want these to be set all the time. You may want this set, uh, you know, after hours or during business hours only, or you know, during a specific set of hours, you know, from like midnight to 1 a.m. And those are something you'll want to set up before you you get into this alarm here as well. I already had some set up as well, but for this demo, I'm going to just set always. Uh, actually, you know what? I think it would be very beneficial to show the time profile. Um, so I'm going to go right back over to here. 
I'm not going to save my changes. I'll have to reset that up. But this is something you should do first as well as get your time profile set up. So right here we have our daytime time profile set up right here. This is set up based off of our geo coordinates right here that automatically defines when the sun is up and when the sun is down. So this is really awesome, really helps you to easily define your your daytime and nighttime positions. And uh, you can do that pretty, pretty straightforward if you create a new uh, day length time profile right here. You'll set in your geo coordinates right there and it'll automatically define that stuff right there for you on your time profile. So really fast, really easy. The other option is just a standard time profile right here. Where we can just create a new profile and we can just call this like after hours if we wanted. And then we'll want to specify the time range which we want it from. So we'll say we want it from. Uh, we'll say like. 6 p.m. Or gosh, we'll go like, yeah, 6 p.m. to. Uh, You kind of just drag the mouse down here and then we'll right click. So we've, we've selected all that time and I'm just left clicking with my mouse and dragging down from the top time all the way down to the bottom time. And we can add, we'll add a recurring time here and we're going to go ahead and we're going to say daily. Um, and we're going to say so every day this is going to repeat right here. And this is on that selected time that I've set for right there and I can go ahead and hit OK. That's my selected time there. So that's from 6 p.m. to midnight and then we'll want from midnight to we'll say uh, 8 a.m. So we'll go ahead and go right there. Oops. We'll add another recurring time. We want this daily as well right here. So that's going to be from 12 a.m. to 8 a.m. for those eight hours right there. Go ahead and hit OK and that's our selected time now. So this is our profile right here. We have our selected time set from 12 a.m. to 8 a.m. Then there's no time selected from 8 a.m. to 6 p.m. And then from 6 p.m. to midnight, we have that selected there. We'll go ahead and hit OK. And that is our time profile configuration right there. So the selected time is the time when the it is in action. So that is the time that we want things to happen or we want events to occur. So jumping back over to my alarms really quick, go ahead and jump through this really fast, add new alarm, go ahead and name it. Um, per side. This support office, sorry. Trigger again, we're going to do system event. We're going to jump down here to motion detected. Set our sources here. We'll expand this out again and take a second to load again. Actually, it was ready for me that time. Sweet. Go ahead and set our support office. OK. And then our time profile. This is what we just created right here. So we can go ahead and set that for after hours now. Um, and then we can set a map that we can tie this to. So if we already have maps in our system, we can tie this right into it. So I'll go ahead and just do our Stone HQ office plan map right there. Um, and this will then associate that camera. If that camera exists on the map, it'll associate it on the map there for you. If you have a smart map in your system and GPS coordinates are associated to cameras, you can use your smart map right there. And then we can define a, any operator actions that you have that they that there's required to respond to it and then the events that that triggers right here for this we just want the alert to pop up for us so we're kind of not going to do anything with our operator action right there we can add related cameras as well to it so we've defined our support office but there may be other cameras in that area that we want to associate so when this one triggers it also pulls up a couple other cameras i don't really have any other cameras in that area i do have like the server room in that area that i could add as well um, but i'm i'm not going to define any related cameras for this event here because we just want to show when this camera goes off and I don't need to show any other cameras. The owner of the system, this is going to show all of your owner or your users in your system you have here. I'm going to go ahead and just associate it to myself right here. So this is it'll basically come in and be assigned automatically to me in the system right here. You don't need to define an owner of the alarm. You can leave this blank right here and it'll just come in and then when someone grabs it, they can assign it to themselves. So if you don't know who's going to be grabbing these alarms, you can leave that blank. I'm just just going to go ahead and associate it to myself so that I know whose it, who's it is and whose it's going to. We can define the priority level here, and these priority levels are defined right over here, which we'll go over here in just a second after we've set this up. So we'll go ahead and set this to high, 
and we can define a category. So we have these predefined categories that we have um, set up right now, Eastern and Western. We don't need to specify this if we don't want to. This is just for organizational purposes in your alarm manager. And then you can also have events that are triggered by this alarm as well. So we can specify other events that happen and occur in the system. So we can basically say when this alarm goes off, uh, this other action happens. We can have it trigger a floodlight. We can have it trigger a strobe light, something that's tied into our system, play a message on a speaker, whatever whatever we want to really, uh, we can kind of tie those uh, things into here. So we can say, you know, it's an output or it's another event that we're gonna tie to and we can trigger those things from um, the alarm right here. So we'll go ahead and uh, set that just for there. We're not going to trigger any other alarms off of this for, for right now. And we have the option here to set it to auto close when motion stops. So it's going to automatically pull this in based off of motion detection that the stop action is stopped. So we can say you auto close this alarm when motion stops. The nice thing about this is, well, it'll clear your alarms. It'll clear uh, the flashing on the screen or on the on the map, I should say, sorry. And if you want that to happen automatically, you can go ahead and check that box there. But for most purposes on motion, you're kind of, if you want your people to be investigating it or looking into it, you don't want that to auto close the alarm when motion is stopped. You want the alarm to stay open until they've looked at the alarm and cleared it out themselves. So this right here is just saying you can, it can be assigned to administrators. So you can check that box or, or uncheck it if you don't want it, administrators to have that alarm assigned to them in the alarm manager. So we'll go ahead and save this right here. So we've saved this alarm. This alarm is now active in our system right now, and it'll immediately start working. A couple other things that I just want to go over on the alarm, though, is so the priority levels we have here defined, those can be set under our alarm data info or data settings. So right here we have our high setting right here, and we can associate sounds that we have with these as well. So you can see here our high alarm is set to gunshot detected on Lawndale. So that's what the sound is associated to. So looking at that there, we may be like, actually, I don't, this isn't a gunshot detection. So actually I'm going to want to change this to maybe like a low uh, or a, to a medium priority level. And then I can go over here and I can see, all right, this is my medium priority level. And I can assign that to a sound itself too. And you can add different sounds into the system as well. Um, if you go to your sound settings right here, this is where you're able to add wave files and add in those. So we added these two files in here. Any server that's on Windows will automatically bring in these ones here that have the asterisk, the beep, the exclamation, the hand, and the question. Those come from Windows itself. Um, but you can add in new ones by just hitting add and searching for a wave file on the machine that you're on at that time and, and upload it into the server. So and it does only support wave files, unfortunately. So if you have issues with that, you can, again, reach out to us here at Stone Security. We can help you get you those wave files if you need or, or you know, uh, build out some of those for you. We'd happy to help on that. So those are your uh, sound settings that you can set there. You can set it to repeat the sound as well. So for this one right here, we're going to go ahead and just set it to the beep. And we're going to set it to repeat and then we're also going to turn on desktop notifications right here for this anything that's set in this medium level and we can change this as well the name of these so that they don't are they're not high medium and low you can actually adjust this and you can have this set to motion alert so that's the priority level um, is is motion alert and you'll see here under um, my definitions now that's the priority level is motion alert so I can kind of set those up however I want and I can add more than uh, three here. I can have four. I can kind of keep going and expanding these down so you can have lots of different priority levels. Priority levels don't need to necessarily be thought of as, you know, high, low, medium, like those types of things. They can be defined however you want in the system, which is, is really nice. Um, you also have different states down here that you can define as well for, you know, new alarms. If you want, they come in as new and then if in progress on hold close or you can specify, a, you know, a different category level for uh, what you want to state you want to put them in. And this is what this is what the user in the smart client will be able to basically set it to. So when they're investigating it, they can move it to in progress. And then once they've investigated, they can move it to closed or they can put it on hold, right? Or something like that, or they can define, you can define a user defined field here and you can say um, that this uh, is, you know, the status, the status of this alarm right now is, you know, 
in trouble or something like that, whatever you, whatever you want. Um, and then those categories that I was telling you about before, those can be defined here. So we have two categories in our system, a Western and an Eastern category. So if I wanted to, I could do a third category here and I could call these uh, motion alerts. So I can filter off of that. And then on my, save that setting there, on my alarm here, I can set this as a category for motion alerts, so I can actually filter off of that. So anytime I get alarms in my system, I can filter and say, I only show me motion alerts in that category field there. So it really helps you kind of sort through that information that you receive in your system there. So because it's not after hours right now in our system, and we may want to uh, have this actually go off so we can see how it works, I'm gonna go ahead and just set this to always for right now. So these alarms will start coming in. And I'm going to go ahead and minimize our management client, get logged into our smart client here now. So you go ahead and see that process and kind of show you how those alarms will look and uh, pop up in the system. All right, so once we're in the smart client here, you'll be able to see the alarms that we triggered. So right now I have these going off right now. You can see my desktop notification popping up right here for that alarm. I have them populating into my alarm manager right here. You can see on the map I have associated right here, that camera has that red ring around it right there. I can click on the different events and it'll go ahead and play back that event on the video right over here in the preview and I can click through those and see those actions right now. So I have a filter applied right now on here where I'm filtering off of that category name, which I had mentioned before. So I have it filtered to show just the motion alerts alarms right now in our alarm manager. Um, so if I wanted to act on any one of these, I would right click it and I can acknowledge it, set it on hold and close, which I had showed you, you know, before in that there. So I can go ahead and right click on any one of these and close these out and I can specify a reason or uh, and write a comment in there in there as well for the reason why. And you, those are defined in that uh, alarm data settings as well for my reasons and uh, for closing. So that's the uh, motions on server side and how they show up in milestone and how you set them up and configure them. Excellent, thank you, Bryson. Um, anybody has any questions, you know how to reach us, support at stonesecurity.net. Thank you.